Thanks. Um, hello, my name is uh, my name is Andrea Floresco, and I will talk about Rust VMM and how can that help you into building your own custom VMM. So, this is my first time at FOSDEM. Uh, well, actually, my second time giving a presentation, and I heard that the first thing that you have to do is introduce yourself. In, in case you are wondering, uh, this is a failed attempt at uh, reproducing my GitHub profile page. Um, I'm super excited about open source. This is my current focus at uh, Amazon, where I'm a software development engineer. Uh, I'm a maintainer at Firecracker and also a contributor at RustVMM. But before getting into details about why, what either of these things are, uh, let me start with a simple analogy. So let's say that we want to build a motorcycle. The first step is to gather the requirements and uh, getting a pretty clear idea of what we want to build. Next, we will just uh, break it into tasks and thinking about uh, the components that we need for our motorcycle. But then we soon realize that this is actually going to take a lot of time. So can we use something that already exists? And the answer is yes, because I wouldn't have asked the question otherwise. So we can use a car. Uh, everybody is using the car. Uh, we know that the car is great. People have used it in other projects as well. So it must be perfect for our use case. Now, the car is too complex, so we just start removing the components that we do not need, and we soon face a serious problem. So the, car, the motorcycle will fall down, so we have to add some weight to balance it, which means that we patch it a bit. Next, we are at the end of our project, and we compare what we wanted to build <laughs> with what we actually built, and we are not really satisfied with the result. So even though the car was super great, uh, our motorcycle is not ideal. Now, we naturally ask ourselves, is there a better way to build this? And of course there is. Um, now, we can build it from scratch, but that takes a lot of time. So, moving to the technical side of the talk, uh, this is similar to what CruiseVM did about two years ago. Uh, instead of using uh, an existing VMM, they decided to build their own VMM. Uh, as a lightweight VMM written in Rust. Uh, CrossVM runs on top of KVM, and it is used for providing uh, application isolation in Chromium OS. Uh, moving a bit in time, uh, about more than one year ago, uh, we decided to build Firecracker. We also wanted a lightweight VMM uh, that can boot very fast and uh, that, it, that has a low memory footprint. Uh, and that is because uh, we want to build Firecracker for short-lived and uh, multi-tenant workloads. Now, Firecracker was also supposed to run on top of KVM, and we started our uh, design process and we analyzed uh, the options that uh, we have. We decided to go with Rust because it's a system language. It's a language that offers uh, memory safety, concurrency safety, and also it has performance that is similar to modern C++. Now, after some digging, we discovered CrossVM, and we decided to uh, start our work from there. Now, even if Firecracker uh, was developed, was started as a fork of CrossVM, uh, the projects almost instantly diverged. And that is because uh, they have really different customer use cases. So CrossVM, as I said, uh, is providing uh, Linux, uh, uh, it's providing isolation for Linux application in Chromium OS, which means that uh, you could potentially run, for example, Photoshop in your Chromebook. And for running Photoshop, it would actually make a whole lot of difference in having features like GPU and PCI. Now, Firecracker is used for some other things. So uh, it is powering uh, AWS uh, Fargate and uh, AWS Lambda. And it is, uh, it's run, it's, it is running in a cloud environment at scale, which means that we added features uh, that could make us operate it easily, like metrics, uh, but we also have rate limiting for uh, block devices and for network devices, and we also have a uh, feature by which the guests can query uh, information about the micro VM that is running in. 
uh, which is MMDS. Now, they are different, we talked about it, but still there are uh, some common virtualization components. So, because they are both built on top of uh, KVM, they have the KVM API wrappers. Uh, they have a block device and network device, so they have a similar implementation of the specification. And uh, because they are both lightweight micro, VM, micro VMs, well, VMMs, <laughs> uh, they have a minimal kernel loader. And there are some other uh, components as well. So basically, if we are going back to the uh, analogy with uh, which I started the presentation, we are now having two motorcycles, but if somebody wants to build a third motorcycle, there is no good way to do that. So basically, they would have to either fork one of the projects or start from scratch. And actually, this is where RASVMM comes into place, and one of the reasons why it exists. Uh, RASVMM is an open source project. It started about two months ago. Uh, it's very fresh. Um, and it is a place for sharing common virtualization components. If you're wondering why would you actually want that, well, the first obvious reason is uh, that it would be actually very easy for Firecracker and CrossVM to share common virtualization code. But uh, since we are here, and I can ask you why would you actually care about that, because maybe you wouldn't, unless you were working for one of the projects. Uh, and now, the answer is you should care about it, because RASVMM is going to do much more. So with RASVMM, uh, you can create your custom VMMs. And uh, that is because it is taught with modularity and testing in mind. So, for example, let's say that you want to build a, a VMM that is uh, for uh, Kubernetes. That means that this VMM is going to be fully compatible with the uh, runtime interface. And also it will have uh, features like memory hot plug and CPU hot plug and host file system sharing which is something that, for example, in Firecracker, uh, we don't have a really good use case to add it. Uh, so far, there are some people that are involved. Uh, we aren't ma many people. Uh, this is a call for you to get involved as well. Uh, people have contributed code. People have uh, participated in discussions. Uh, we have a feedback process by which we are adding components into RASVMM, so people have also provided reviews. Uh, if you want to help, uh, it is as simple as becoming a RASVMM member on GitHub. Uh, you just have to open a new issue in the community repository. Then, uh, if you want to participate in the discussions, uh, there is an email list. And if you have an idea about a component that could be a good fit for <coughs> RASVMM, you can write it and then open a review request and people will look at it. Now, you might think that the talk is over, but it's not. And there are two reasons for that. So one is I just added the slides two days ago. And the other reason is that we are going to uh, talk about what's next, so what is in the future. Uh, there are some uh, discussions ongoing about uh, v adding vhost user, uh, user space implementation for vhost in RASVMM. Uh, then there are also some uh, discussions around porting QMU components, which I actually find uh, very interesting. But the feature is not set in stone, and uh, it is an ideal time for you to come and decide with us. The talk is still not over. Uh, and we are going to uh, go over an example of a VMM that you can build with components of Rust VMM. And this, uh, this slide is actually here because with the current stage of Rust VMM, you can't really build anything because we don't have enough crates there uh, or components. So we are going to build a minimal VMM. It's not exactly minimal. Uh, it is more to prove a point of the structure of Rust VMM. So our VMM is going to run on top of KVM. So we will need some KVM wrappers. Then we will need a kernel loader, a block device for our root file system, and the user interface. The first thing that we are going to do is uh, write the VMM user interface. Uh, this is basically the place where uh, an external client, let's call it, is going to configure uh, the VM that wants to, that, that wants to run. Now, next we are going to look at the future RAS VMM components. 
so before getting into details about uh, what these things are, let's talk a bit about structure. Uh, each box on the right side of the screen, it's a crate or a package. Uh, in Rust, uh, packages are called crates. So that was my first slide, uh, sharing uh, crates, virtualization crates. Uh, now, uh, each crate can have zero, one, or many modules. And uh, this is, for example, the Vertio devices, which has uh, a block device, a net, a VSOC, and a serial, uh, each structured in a module. Now, there is an interesting feature uh, about that Rust. Uh, there is an interesting thing that Rust helps us with now. Uh, instead of, for example, you want to use just the block device, and instead of importing all the code, you can import only the block device uh, by using features, which basically means that uh, it's actually just uh, conditional compiling. Now, let's get them one by one. So KVM bindings is actually auto-generated code with binding. Uh, it is a Rust for in, uh, function interface to the KVM headers. But these are not very useful by, uh, by themselves because uh, it's basically just uh, defines and structures. Now, on top of that, we can build the KVM wrapper, which actually has uh, implementation uh, wrappers over IOCTLs, KVM uh, IOCTLs, which can help us in doing stuff like uh, opening def KVM, uh, creating a VM, also creating vCPUs, and so on. Next, we have Vertio bindings, uh, which are similar to KVM, only that they are uh, auto-generating from uh, Vertio headers. And we have the implementation for the Vertio uh, specification in the Vertio devices that I talked uh, about earlier. Uh, next, we have a kernel loader. Uh, the kernel loader is minimal. It just loads the uh, kernel image uh, in the guest memory. A rate limiter that can be applied on the Vertio devices to limit operation per second and the bandwidth, and also the vhost user. Now, we said that our uh, VMM is going to be minimal, so we are just going to select some of these. And because these components are actually independent in some, uh, in some way, we can't just dump them into our VMM and everything works. We will have to also add a VMM glue uh, that is basically uh, responsible for uh, interacting with the VMMs and also making the connection to the VMM user interface so uh, people can actually uh, start VMs with our minimal VMM. <laughs> now, there is only one thing to do. We have to profit. And that was all. Uh, this is really the end of the talk. The first uh, link you have is the uh, Rust VMM um, organization on GitHub. Next, if you click the link uh, on this slide, the second link, it will take you to the subscribe page for the Rust VMM email list. And the last one is uh, my, my email address. So if you have any questions that you do not want to ask now, you can send me an email and I will be more than happy to help you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you said that uh, in your first version of the presentation you had crates and so on. Does that mean that all those crates are already available on crates.io? Uh, so the question was if uh, on the first, do you mean this one? Yes. So uh, the question was whether these crates are already available on crates.io. So the thing is that uh, the only thing that we actually have in Rust VMM uh, now is the uh, crate KVM bindings. This is already available on crates.io as well, and we are using it in Firecracker, so it's, it's working. <laughs> All the others, we have, to, we have to add them. But you reserve the names. We, uh, so the, the follow-up question was if we reserve the names. No, we didn't. You should. <laughs> <laughs> And the answer was we should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have plans to add the ARM support? Yeah. So the question was uh, if we have 
plan to uh, if you plan to add arm support uh, so we st I started with KVM bindings uh, it has support for arm so the bindings are generated for arm as well and uh, the plan is actually for the craze that I'm adding there to have support for both uh, x86 and arm and I'm actually working with one of my colleagues to do this for the KVM wrappers What was, sorry? Okay, so uh, I don't have, a, the question is if we are going to add support for other architectures as well. Uh, it, so I, can't do that by myself, obviously, because uh, I'm uh, 26 and uh, don't really actually know all those architectures <laughs> by name. Yes. Yeah, this is different. So, uh, well, because you can conditionally, conditionally compile everything. Uh, that means that you can add support for many platforms uh, and it should be okay for most people because if they don't want your code, they will just not pull it in. Yeah. Is this going to be a common foundation with CrossDM? Are, are you working with the CrossDM team for it to be become a common foundation? It is a common foundation. We are all, uh, oh, so uh, the question was if this is a <laughs> common foundation and if we are working with CrossVM. So, I just want to make something clear. This is not Firecracker, so uh, this is not a product owned by a company, and it's not a product uh, of its own. Uh, it's really just a place to share common virtualization components between many VMMs, so we can build them in the same world, in the same way. <laughs> Uh, the question is if we can create non rust Rust VMM on top of it, and I don't really know how to answer that question. Uh, probably for languages that uh, allow you to call uh, code that is not Rust, maybe? I, I really don't know how to answer that, sorry. So <laughs> there, there, there is the, the question was if we are going to replace QMU components with components from RASVMM. And there is actually uh, some discussion about it on the RASVMM uh, email list. You should join it as well. So you can participate in the discussion. So I think that's, that's the plan. Yep. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.